All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Truth Seeker Network. And guess what? Bitcoin has fallen. I think it's time for everybody to sell and get out right now. Bitcoin has dropped dramatically. It was at 73,000. And now Bitcoin has dropped all this morning. It went all the way down to $60,000. That's a huge swing. 60,000 and something dollars all the way from $73,000. I think it's time for us to get out. I think Bitcoin is about to go to zero. I think everybody should sell right now. Everybody get out of Bitcoin and sell, sell, sell. I was wrong. People get out right now. Get out before it's too late. Save yourself. Save your money. Don't lose all your money. Don't put your money in this funny money. Just get out of Bitcoin. Okay? Just get out. I'm telling you, it's going down. And y'all know I'm not telling the truth, right? But that's how new investors in Bitcoin, that's how they play. That's how they see the game. And so they bought when it was going up. And, you know, and the psychology of people is, is, is it's sad, though. But this is why most people don't make money. It's because as Bitcoin goes up in value, then when it's moving high, that's when everybody wants to jump in. For the fear of missing out, right? They want to FOMO in. But when Bitcoin was down at $16,000, I was making these videos and I was telling everybody to buy. Well, Dave Ramsey, Jim Cramer, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, and all those other cronies out there, they was telling people to, it was rat poisoning. Um, you know, they would, I mean, they was going off. They, it was their time to shine. And I was and I was putting in their chats and making videos, and I was telling you, look, I, I like I, and Dave Ramsey, I was one of the ones that chatted in his little comment section. I told him we're gonna see who's gonna have the last laugh, because when Bitcoin was down, he was talking a lot of trash about Bitcoin, him and his and his crew, and there was a lot of people in the comments that were on my side as well, you know, that we were all saying the same thing about Bitcoin, and I said time will tell. And as far as I'm concerned, if Bitcoin went to zero from now, I already won. Because from $16,000 all the way to $73,000, if you would have listened to me, you would have made more money than you made in the stock market, more, more money than you made in anything else. You could have, even right now, is at $60, $63,000. So even right now, from $16,000 to $63,000, you would have listened to me, you would be making money right now way more than in, than in so-called in the mutual fund, right? But this is what's going on. And so these, these big players back then were telling people to sell their Bitcoin. Bitcoin is scarce. Bitcoin is rare. And I keep saying it in my videos. I know it's not like a, you know, a broken record, but uh, I mean, what else can I say? But the truth, right? It is what it is. Michael Saylor knows it, right? Michael Saylor, Michael Strategy buys 9,200 more BTC worth $620 million. Now owns 1% of all Bitcoin. So what do you what do you think? What do you think? What do you think the reason is that Michael Saylor is buying Bitcoin like this? And BlackRock and, and Fidelity and Grayscale and all these other countries and governments and, and average people. And mom and pop stores all across the country. Um, other other uh, countries already had um, Bitcoin ETFs, right? Why do you think they're doing this? Because they know Bitcoin is the world's money. It's going to be in the future. So they're getting ahead of the game now. If Bitcoin is going to be, let's say Bitcoin be a million dollars a coin or $10 million a coin then right now these people know that this price right now means nothing. If you buy it at 50,000, 40,000, 60,000, you're gonna make a lot more right now by investing into it early than later on. So as there's some of the new retail investors, as they get into it and sell out, that's exactly what they want to do. They shake the market up so that you will, you will, you will sell because you're in fear. Because you you looking at the money. 
And I'm going to say this. Don't invest more than you are willing to lose. Don't invest your mortgage money, okay? If you got to pay rent, then pay your rent, right? Only invest what you're willing to lose and keep it simple. But that's all you have to do. So let's get into this real quick. Michael started has continued expanding his, his Bitcoin holdings, announcing the purchase of approximately 9,245 Bitcoins for around $623 million in cash. Wow. Now, I'm going to show y'all something, right? I'm going to take y'all back in time. I'm going to have to take you back in time. Because I'm going to show you something. And I'm going to tell you everything that's going on right now, the rise of Bitcoin. My opinion is all been pre-planned. And I'm going to show you why. All right, y'all. So y'all remember, I'm going to take y'all back in time. Y'all remember when, back in the day, when we had pay phones. A lot of people don't remember, but they had, had pay phones on the street back in the day. And we, and then right after the, 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 uh, the, the remember the little, the pager that came out and people had pagers, you know? So this is before the cell phone. And when somebody called you, then you would get a, you know, you would get a beep on your, on your beeper. We call them a beeper or your pager. And then everybody ran to a phone, you know, and it was like the thing to have. It was, it was like everybody had a beeper. So, you know, it was that the cool thing, you know, but everything back then was moving towards where we are today. So it went from that. And I remember we had like a uh, telephone and I remember when they took all the, um, all the pay phones from the 7-Elevens and from all the stores, they took all these pay phones away. Why? Because they were bringing in a new, bringing in a new thing, which is the cell phone. They wanted everybody to have a cell phone so they can track and trace you. You know, your cell phone is, is your individual uh, blueprint of you, your voice, right? Your texts and emails, you know, it all links back to you. And so they just, so this was the game plan was to put everybody on their own personal device that you use, I mean, your, your cell phone is now like a computer. It basically is a computer. It does everything, right? But back then, back then you had to go to a, uh, you had to use a, a, a landline. You had to go to a phone booth or something like that to make a phone call. So they got rid of all the phone booths. And they told us in our areas, you know, basically because it was drugs, you know, people were making drug trades using the cell phone, I mean, using the, um, you know, using the uh, the pay phones. So they got rid of the pay phones. All uh, the public phones would like disappear. Also, um, do y'all remember when TV went from analog to digital? And so there was, we got these boxes that if you didn't want to switch, they gave you a box to put on your TV so that you could pick up the new digital channels and all the analog now was gone. So because they, they switched the whole signal. Everything went digital, right? And so let's go, let's get up to the 1980, uh, no, let's go to the 2007 crash. So now, the, now we back there, now the stock market is crashing, right? In 2007, 2008, right? Now, what they knew back then was that, so Bitcoin was, let me say, stop this. So Bitcoin was born I guess in like 2009, like March of 2009. But was it accidental? Because I found out that in the United States that they were actually working on crypto technology back in, even, even in the 70s, cryptic technology. Now they knew that in 1971, when we went to the gold standard, when Nixon took, um, took us off the gold standard, right, in 1971, he took us off the gold standard. That means all the dollar bills now that were printed were backed by nothing. And they called it the petrodollar. 
because we now because we using our oil with Saudi Arabia and so forth, right? But so now, um, so basically now the dollar had no backing, and so it was just backed by the faith of the United States government. And before you had a piece of gold, like if you had a twenty dollar bill. The bank supposed to had that goal where you could take that twenty dollar bill back to the get to the bank, and you can say, "Hey, I want my twenty dollars worth of gold." They give you your your twenty dollars worth of gold. You give them the twenty dollar note because that's what the note was for—the gold. So your bank's actually supposed to had the amount of gold so that you can always redeem that bill. But the banks didn't have the gold, and I think it was in the nineteen thirties or somewhere back in there. When they actually confiscated the gold from Americans and made it illegal to hold gold. Right? And so now in today's world, they were just printing and printing money. And as they started printing money, guess what? A thing called inflation started taking hold. The more money they printed, the more, the less the 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 the, the, the value of your dollar went. So I'm like I was saying before, when I remember as a kid, we used to buy a candy bar Snickers for like 25 and 35 cents. Now that same Snickers is skinnier, smaller, and it costs over a dollar and fifty, something like this, just for the one of the little small one. Just for the one. Why? Because the dollar has inflated so much because they keep printing and printing money. And these people knew that this time was going to come to an end. That the dollar, it was going to bring it. it was, they knew these people, the, these uh, economists, whatever you want to call them, they look further out into the future and they can see where this is going, right? So they knew that there would come a time where, where there will be to the point that the money train printed so much money that there's no turning back now and we, we, we're doomed for a collapse, right? And you see homelessness. That's the reason why people are homeless now because you can't afford a home. You can't afford a car. A car used to be two or $3,000 back in the day, way back in the day, but now it's like 40, 50, 60, 70, $100,000 for a car. House, 20, $40,000. Now a house costs four, five, or 600, 700 million dollars. Way up now, right? When you go to the grocery store, you're having a hard time buying your food because the prices keep going up. Your water, electric, gas keep going up. Why? Because they, because the money is not your wages at your job. You're not keeping up with inflation. Inflation is going higher than the, even even your raises that you're getting at your jobs. So they give you a raise, but by the time you get your raise, you go spend your money at the store. <laughs> The, the, the prices of the store to raise up. So it's like you never got it. And they talking about, it was talking about what, giving the McDonald's workers $15 an hour. Was it 2023 or one of these years, right? So by the time they come to these years, by the time they give you that $15 raise, you're, you, you're still making it, you're still probably making about $6 an hour for real, $7 an hour. And that's because the inflation. And so and I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you what in 1988, they knew this back in 1988. And I'm going to show you this Bitcoin to me was already forecasted back then. And I'm going to show you this. I'm going to play this little quick video. Check this out. Let's take a look at this magazine, Kevin. This is from 1988, The Economist. Get ready for a world currency. The magazine cover shows a phoenix bird rising from the ashes of burning American money. At the center of the page, a bronze coin engraved with the words, 10 Phoenix 2018 shines bright. The cover advertises the magazine's leading story in which the author suggests a single unified currency could ease international financial woes. The article's author, anonymous behind an editorial team alias, envisages a modern world connected like never before. Instead of the yen or dollar or rupee, the Phoenix coin would dominate. There would be no need for expensive international currency transfers or cumbersome money wires. 
everyone would be using the same coin, the Phoenix coin. Check this out. All right, so y'all, let's take a look at this cover. We're going to take a look at this cover a little closer. And look at this. You see this? This is 1988. And look at this coin, 2018. 10 Phoenix. But see, look at the Bitcoin right over here. You see that? This is a gold coin around the neck. They said bronze coin, but yeah, to me, it's a gold coin. And look how similar it is to Bitcoin. Right? You see this little article right here? A new record for Bitcoin. BitPay reports one billion worth of transactions for 2018. That was 2018. And look, 2018. See this? Now, do you think this was a coincidence in 2009 when Bitcoin came out after the crash? No. Because look at the whole world now. The whole world is going digital. Right? Everything you're doing is digits. And they, I mean, you got to think there was a transformation, even with your uh, your paychecks, right? You had you had from what you got a paper check when you used to get paid at your job too, and then they, then I remember when they moved to direct deposit. So now you, it was like digits, basically in your in your uh, in your bank account. When you got paid, it was automatically deposited in your bank account. So they was already getting us used to digits, using using credit cards and and so forth. So moving into this digital world, because they already know that Bitcoin is going to be the savior that's going to solve the inflation problem. Why is that? Because Bitcoin is only 20, excuse me, 21 million that ever can be minted. And right now we're about to go to the halving. Right now there's 900 Bitcoin created a day. No more can be created. In the next month, it's going to go from 900 to 450 Bitcoin per day. So that means Bitcoin is not inflatable. Like the dollar, you can keep, for instance, gold. If if So they can always find more gold, right? So they can always can create more gold. If the demand for gold should rise, then they can make more of it. Silver the same way. They can dig for more silver. Diamonds, they can dig for more diamonds. Oil, they can drill for more oil. Well, Bitcoin has a set price. There's a, there's a, a set amount that's going to ever be minted. So therefore, you cannot inflate it. And Bitcoin is going to be the savior to the world's economies when everything collapses and everything implodes. And right now, everything is collapsing. Everything is imploding. That's why people are laid, being laid off. That's why the homelessness is, is going up uh, uh, dramatically across America. You see a whole bunch of homeless uh, Americans living in tent cities all across this, these states. And this is very sad. Meanwhile, they're bringing in immigrants, right? They're housing immigrants with um, they're giving them food, shelter, and our tax dollars is actually housing immigrants. Now they're even saying that immigrants can have the right to be to uh, have a gun. I mean, this is this is craziness that's going on, but they know that collapse is coming, and if the dollar bill collapses, then all the economies around the world is going to collapse because the dollar right now is the strongest currency across the globe. And if the dollar collapses, a lot of these other countries uh, will collapse too. And then we can go to a global depression, recession. But Bitcoin was created in 2009, right after the crash of 2007 and 2008. And I believe it was done on purpose because in 1988, they already knew that it was coming. Like I said, in the 70s, I know there was, you can look this up yourself, there was, there was uh, working on... Um, cryptic technology, right? So I don't know who uh, uh, Satoshi Nakamoto is. I don't think it's one person. I think it's a group of people that have been working on this. And this is not a coincidence that this 
this book, they remember before they do stuff, they always forecast it to you. They give you a chance. And you, right now, y'all have 15 years to get into Bitcoin. And you still have a chance to get in now. And I'm sorry to say, but I don't think, you know, a lot of people are saying that it's early. Yes, it's early still for Bitcoin, but it's not early for retail people or for average people. And why am I saying this? Because Bitcoin is trading at 63,000 today, right? After the halving, it could jump to a hundred and something thousand. I mean, just to get a million Satoshis, which is 0 0.01, it's going to cost you over $600 as of right now. Just to get point, just to get a million Satoshi, six hundred dollars, over six hundred dollars. So, if Bitcoin keeps going up, and they say that most Americans don't even have four hundred dollars in their bank account for an emergency, not alone your wages have not kept up with inflation. It's going to be almost. It's getting late for average people because if Bitcoin goes to two to three hundred thousand dollars a coin then those prices are gonna jump. You know, if it goes to 100,000, just to get 0 0.01, it's gonna cost you $1,000. When it was 16,000, when I was telling people to buy in 20,000 and so forth, you could have bought, you could have got 0 0.01 Bitcoin at 16,000 for $160. So as Bitcoin keeps going higher and higher, yes, it's still early, because it could go into the millions. But for many Americans and many um, average people, the time is winding down. It's getting too late. But this has been for, so them showing you that this right here is not coincidence that Bitcoin came out in 19, excuse me, in 2009. And it's been going on for 15 years now. Everything is going digital. And then you got AI coming out. So they purposely, we've been purposely moved from analog, right? From having pay phones to actually having a device that you carry everywhere and that everybody can do, cannot go anywhere without the cell phone. And now we're in the digital world, AI world, and we are all being led this way. And this is not accidental. And so if you're not in the new currency that's coming up, then you will be left out and you will be basically on the poor side because most people have been taught by these, these gurus that it was fake money. It was rat poison and all that other stuff. Meanwhile, these same people are buying it up. So these rich people in the institutions, they already know what was coming. And the governments, they know what's coming. So don't be distracted, okay? Do not be distracted. This is not accidental. And I believe this economist magazine, this magazine was actually forecasting Bitcoin because it looks just like a Bitcoin, doesn't it? Right over here, they almost look just alike. And that's why you got the homelessness going across America, you know, because the dollar... It's collapsing. Well, just look at this. Look at these pictures, you know. This is sad, but this is America. And you're bringing the immigrants to, a, to this country and the American people themselves, they have nowhere to go. They're living in the streets. They work for corporations. And now they, they're being let go from their jobs. All these people living on the street. Look at this. This is sad. But this is the reality of what's going on all across America. See? These are American people. But since the dollar's inflating and the housing, home prices are going up, jobs are letting go. People now, right? Based because of AI. Right? And this is what's happening. And so, this is going all across the country where people are just losing their jobs and they're living on the streets.
and we can do something about it. But corporations are out here making money, right? And when they have to lay, lay off people, this is what you get. People just, and these are American people all on the streets. Look at this. California, it don't matter where it is, all across the nation. And this is America, the richest city, the richest country in the world. Look. All right. So this is what inflation does over time. This is exactly what it does. It makes a lot of poor people. And AI is going to get rid of a lot of uh, people's jobs as well. So when AI gets rid of a lot of people's jobs, it's going to get to the point where there's going to be more people in this situation. And see, that's why they created Bitcoin. Bitcoin was created because it cannot be inflated. And that's the only thing that's going to save the world economies is something that cannot be inflated. And it's going to go up in value. And it's going to be broken down in digits. That's why they call it Bitcoin. So I don't want people to be on the street like this. I don't want to see anybody on the street like this. That's a terrible place to be. And that's why I'm trying to get, get people to invest in the Bitcoin now. Just get some now and just hold on to it. I've been saying that for a while now, even when it was down to where we are today. All right? Bitcoin is running out and time is running out. I'm not going to sit there and tell you that it's early still. Yeah, it's early for institutions. It's early for rich people. It's early for people who got a lot of money. But for average people, it's running out. It started in the pennies. Now it's in the thousands. And soon it's going to go to six figures. Then how much will you be able to get then? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We got to do something, y'all. It's sad to see America look like this. This is really sad. This is the Truth Seeking Network. And I'm out.